the word mediocrity is common in Nigeria. The word mediocrity is common in every country in the world. The word mediocrity is very, very powerful word. When you say somebody is a mediocre, what does that mean? When you say he's a mediocre, <laughs> beautiful man. When you say somebody is a mediocre, it means that that person is not thorough. It means that that person is not to be taken seriously. It means that that person should not count among those who matter. What it means is that that person is a laid back person. What it means is that that individual doesn't create value. That's, that's what it means. But if you look at it, mediocrity, the knot of mediocrity is represented by a word called compromise. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Why don't we spend five hours to get results in this thing? It doesn't really matter. So the word it doesn't really matter is, is helping you push anybody to the realm of mediocrity. So look at the word past thinking. Do you know that we live in a world where people are still celebrating their past victory, their past glory, their past very soon. Some of you might retire very soon, right? Some of you might retire very soon. And I see somebody who has retired over five years, ten years, and he still introduces himself as a former director of an agency of government after 10 years of retirement. So what does it mean? What it means is that immediately after retirement, you stopped. You, no growth. <laughs> I have seen a lot of people who, so a commissioner, for instance, is they start with the past commissioner for finance. That's what it, that you start your introduction with. Then former a little then one time <laughs> so so meanwhile while you are still directors here you can begin to think how do i continue to create value where i am right now number one but how do i continue to create value when i step out of the corridors of the civil service so which means I might retire at 60, 65, whatever it is, but the remaining years of my life will be proactive, will be very sound. I'm going to create this business. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Which means you start living afresh after leaving office. So I was training some generals in the army about five years ago. And I got into a deep conversation with, with, with them. I was sharing something about restarting afresh. And the general said, I wish I had this thing. You're sharing now when I first joined the army. So as I'm talking to you right now, I do not know. I'm going to be retiring in a few months. I do not know where to start from. Apparently, he has spent everything before retirement. So the world doesn't celebrate former, former that. If you want to try it, if the people who are coming to you now, who are standing at your doorstep, who are at your offices right now, if you do not leave a legacy that impact and impress on people about your personality, when you leave, you suddenly realize that there will be nobody, nobody, nobody who is going to say hello until you create another set of value. Until you become another, you become more relevant, until you become something extra. The world is, they forget too much. The world forgets soon. So you, 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 
begin now to recreate yourself. That's what it means. So, the past thinking, the past thinking. And do you know there are a lot of people who also stayed at somebody hurt, hurt me, somebody did something bad to me. And they keep it for years. They have never forgiven the person. It's still in their hearts. Meanwhile, they are killing themselves. How can you function as a director, for instance, and you're holding something against someone and it's there? How do you function? So you're still in the past. The person has moved on and you're still in the past. That's why a lot of people are troubled and they can't think properly. So, indecision. Indecision. Should I? Should I not? Should I? Should I not? Should I? Should I not? What should I do after retirement? What should I do right now? In the office, what are my top priorities? You know that type of stuff. A lot of leaders don't stay at the part of priorities. So it's like indecision every moment. Should I do this? So they waste so much time in deciding on what to do. Meanwhile, the world is moving. There is what we call the speed of nation right now. Speed of nation. There's speed going on right now. People are no longer wasting time. People are doing what? They are on the path of the journey. And so, it's better you make the decision right now and you move forward. Whether the decision is wrong or right. But in decision, imagine trying to cross the road, a very busy road. You see? And you're indecisive. Should I cross? Should I not cross? Do you know the amount of accidents that have happened as a result of that? Indecision. So, in terms of policy implementation, in terms of policy formulation, in terms of what are the core indices, in terms of indecision. So, before you decide finally what, the, what you want to generate policy on has already gone bad. So, it's a quick one. And the worst of it all is what? Lack of vision. If you want to see a man who doesn't have a value, who is not important in the real sense of it, find a man without a vision. So you can head a department as a director, what you have is position. Position is not equal to vision. It is possible for somebody to occupy a position and do not have a vision. But if you are a director and you drive a vision, what it means is that you can set that department or that particular group to a place of success and growth. Am I correct? Because if a man does not have a purpose to waking up, sleeping becomes interesting. Think about it. If a person doesn't have a purpose waking up, sleeping becomes interesting. What is that thing that can jack you out of sleep to get done? Is when you are driven by a big vision because vision pulls you. When, when, when you are somebody that is pulled by something, it's vision. That is why the world is looking for visionary leaders. Helen Keller, who is a blind woman, said it's possible to have sight and yet no vision. So what lack of vision has done to our institutions are unbelievable. And when somebody who doesn't have a vision heads a department, the person who, ha who has a vision, who is a deputy, is in trouble. I'm sure some of you have experienced that. Is, is that correct or not? If the person who is heading an institution doesn't have a vision, the person who is the deputy, who has a vision, is in trouble. Especially when the leader is an insecure leader. And that's problematic. So at the level of leadership, once a leader has a vision, you can go to bed. Things will happen. And if there's anything that we need now is visionary leadership. Even in our families. In our families visionary leadership that can drive growth the way we even will cultivate our children is vision. I have already started, as I'm talking to you right now, my children, they have already started making speeches. I get them to make speeches. I started when at one year old, when my baby was six months, 
all of that, I started making speech. I will be talking to her as if I'm addressing an audience. And then she knows how to search for me in the library. Because instead of buying televisions, I, I created a library at home. Physical library. So what they do is that when they look, are looking for me, they come to the library. When they come to the library, they also pick a book and start reading, in quotes. Tearing the book is part of the reading activity for them. I never spank them when they tear the book. I, am, I just allowed, I rather buy another book. But the point is that I discovered that they started reading after a while as they grew. Today, they make speeches for me. So what is that? So very interestingly, if you look at this, look at this, look at this graph. Is there anybody in this hall today that can help me give definition to this graph? This graph. Can anybody interpret this for me? It's a combination of many things. Uh-huh. It's a combination of many things, yeah? But can somebody interpret it for me? Now, do, yes, you want to say something? It's jumbled. It's jumbled. Okay, yes. Graph. Yes. That one went up and is saying low. Yes. That one came down and is saying high. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very interesting. <laughs> yes, ma. From my understanding. Yes. For it to be productive. Yes. Productive, yes. You have to have courage. Yes. Correct. 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 Then um, the next one is passion. It's yes. Also high. Yes. Then the next one is integrity. Yes. To have vision. Yes. Then innovative. Yes. And when mm -hmm. uh, low, low, low capacity, low productivity, yes. you have less courage. Yes. Less innovation. Beautiful. Not passionate. Enough, Beautiful. No integrity. No vision. Beautiful. And if you look at that, even if you have intellectual capacity, 60, and you have all of these others low, you will be as less productive as ever, which means all the PhDs and all the certifications that we get without the core values we're talking about leads us to zero. So what it means is that there's something called leadership capital balance. It's a combination of all the leadership values put together over 100, which you must have at least 60% for you to start leading. For you to be called a leader, you must have a combination of all of this, including the ones that are not here. All the leadership values, ability to work with teams, ability to have emotional intelligence, all of that, you should be able to have at least 60% over 100. So which means that you can become somebody who has a PhD, but in vision, your vision percent is 10%. Your integrity is less than 5%. Your passion is less than 10%. Your innovation is nothing to be compared. But you have a PhD, your performance will be as... That's why the village, you see a, an, an elder in the village, who didn't go to school, but has a lot of intellect, has a lot of local sense, and he's been known as a man of honor. He never lies, you know what I mean? He carries himself well, he never treats anybody badly. They love him in the village. When he stands up to say a word, everybody listens. I don't know if anybody has come across such people before. In my village, I had a lot of them. That is what is called leadership capital. So you can measure your leadership capital. So if I ask you today to fill this, to fill this, represent this graph to be you, right? And take all this stuff, fill it. Give yourself the mark that you want. I, I want everybody to do that. 
because I'm going to ask for that tomorrow. So you just, the truth, where you are, just tell yourself the truth. This is where I am in my journey. So if it is courage, you can say, oh, well, I'm not courageous enough, so maybe 40%, maybe 30%. Most of the time, if you're truthful to yourself, you will realize that there are certain areas you need to develop. So you put premium time on developing them so that your leadership capital can rise. Otherwise, if you have low leadership capital and you get into, you continue to get into the marketplace, the marketplace of ideas, at the end of the day, you will not go far. So that is why, because in our country, we have not prized the concept of leadership capital development. We don't take it very seriously in this country. In 2013, I had the privilege of being nominated by the American government. They nominated me in a program that started in 1932. Every year, Americans look outside, they look outside their country for influential people who are capable of influencing their countries, and they nominate you to be part of this program. So that year, I was the Nigerian that was selected, four from Africa, and 27 of us from all over the world. And when they brought us into Washington, they needed us to do to understudy the leadership capital of what makes America work. What is that thing that makes America work? And we started to study. Went to four states in America, understudying it. Met with different leaders across America. And we realized that America spends $180 billion every year for leadership development. Not only for executives, from high school, primary school, university, they're already pumping money to teach children how to grow in leadership. What, most of the things that we learn in leadership later in life is what they have already taught those children at that age. It was, it was a shocking revelation when I, when I came back with that report. And that program has produced over 300 presidents of countries. Tony Blair is one of them. Which means they are smart. So they, they know that we have to cop in or bring in some of these guys. In case if they are president, just one call, they are part of us. They've understood the American way. That's how to grow a vision. Because people can grow systems. You want to grow this country, you start early to groom a generation of leaders in the core values necessary for nations to work. That's how to grow it. So, I want you to measure yourself with this. Tomorrow, we will look at it. And at the end of the day, it's going to help us in advancing. So I would always advise, the best thing that can happen to you always is make sure your vision capacity. So therefore, having said that, I want to open up this class for discussion. I want to hear leadership according to the specific, you know, maybe I say leadership according to um, Princess JJ Donije Idonije Idonije Jumai Muhammad. Yes, what is leadership according to your definition? I want to define leadership from your perspective. Anybody ready to give me definition leadership according to you? Because you, you can create your own leadership definition today. Tomorrow, I'm going to quote you. Yes, sir. Leadership means ability. Please relax. Just relax. Sit. Enjoy yourself. Ability to work with two important variables for the purpose of achieving, achieving a set goal. What are those variables? The tools and then the individuals. Okay, that's a, that's a definition that we're going to trash. We'll look into it. Yes. Leadership is a way to provide direction mm -hmm. and help others Fantastic. Wonderful. Right. That's, that's great. Leadership according to um, Brulus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Leadership. Any other definition? Yes, ma. Leadership. 
possibility to influence people in positive terms. Fantastic. We're getting there. We're getting there. This is amazing. Any other definition? Yes, ma'am. This is a software. Yes. Leadership uh, from a perspective is impacting Wow. Fantastic. We're getting there. This class is getting interesting. Who else? Who else? Yes, sir. Yes. To me, leadership is the ability to inspire others. Wow. Perform a task. Man, I'm getting excited in this class now, man. Okay, it's an act of inspiring people to mm -hmm. achieve a vision. Wow, this class is ready for me. <laughs> Did you hear that? This is very interesting. But well, take a look at this. Leadership is what? Motivation, persuasion, influence, demonstration, inspiration, responsibility. In fact, my mentor, one of the most powerful men I've ever met in my life, Dr. Miles Monroe. Anybody knows him here? Dr. Miles Monroe had an honor of hosting him in Oweri a few years ago. And he had to speak to 1,500 people, including the government institutions. And he said to me, Linus, there are over 5,000 definitions of leadership globally. But the one that I'd like to share with you today is the one that goes this way. And he said, I quote him, he said, leadership is the ability to inspire, motivate, drive a group of people towards a particular direction via inspiration, not intimidation, or manipulation. Leadership is the ability to inspire, motivate, drive a group of people towards a particular direction via inspiration, not intimidation or manipulation. Or coercion. Or coercion. <laughs> So what is going on in this country, majority of what is happening in this country is not leadership. Is what? Is intimidation, coercion, or manipulation. There are a lot of people around your life currently who are manipulating you on a daily basis. It happens on a daily basis. In that definition, there are five elements I'd like to bring out to you. Five. The first is that Leadership doesn't happen unless somebody makes it happen. That's everything is at the realm of potential until somebody moves it. Look at this. This, this. this is here. It's at the realm of potential. It will stay here. But if I take this thing and I move it to this place, what it means is that something has happened. Is that not true? If somebody walks into a room and the room is dirty, so the person says, what a dirty room. Nonsense. Dirty room. After all the noise, the person decides to walk out of that room. Another person comes. Oh, this room is very dirty. What a dirty room. Let me manage. The person sits down in a dirty room. And the third person comes. What a dirty room. And then he picks up a broom and sweeps the entire room. Amongst three of them, who has led? The third person has led. Leadership by what? Fantastic. That's the point I'm trying to make here. That leadership is the ability to inspire. First, there's a human being first who takes the initiative to do something. First, before you do something, you have become something. Before you do great things, you have become great already. The leader does what he has already become. Leadership by example. So I have already become influential as a result of emotional intelligence and the influence on people's lives. Therefore, I do things that are influential. That's the first thing first. There's a leader. The second thing is that there must be a direction. The leader is the one that does what? 
that provides what? The direction. So you can head the department and you don't provide a direction. If you don't provide a direction, what happens is that the people under you will be frustrated. You take the initiative by doing what? Providing what? A direction. Providing this is the task we must accomplish. There must be a task to be accomplished. So what the leader does is the leader directs that direction, create that direction. The next one is that the leader now, as a result of the direction the leader has created, followers. The leader is ready to acquire follow followers. It's possible for people to follow you out of respect of the office you occupy. They follow you because you occupy an office. But they won't follow you <laughs> if you are not occupying that office, you will not earn their respect. What I normally tell people, seek to earn the respect of people based on what you inspire. Like, comment and subscribe to watch more videos on leadership by Dr. Linus Okorie.